What is up DIY Nation? Welcome back to UFloor, the channel bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. Now today we're installing a new product. Well, maybe it's new for you, but we've installed this before actually and we've installed it in a couple rooms throughout here. But it is this waterproof flooring right here by Pinnacle. As you can see, it says it's very durable, waterproof flooring. It's kid proof, pet proof, waterproof, and whatever that means down there. Anyway, we installed this stuff before and it was quite a breeze. It has a cork bottom on it, so it's a little bit softer on the feet. And it's very DIY friendly to install as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, we're gonna go through the tips and tricks that it takes to get your new floor installed into your room today if this is the product that you're gonna be using. So stay tuned, here we go. Okay guys, to start with, if you have carpet, go ahead and remove it and the carpet pad. Save a piece of pad for later. The tack strip can be a pain. We have been using a shingle shovel for over 10 years to help make life easy on us, but you can also use a hammer and a pry bar. Keep the claws under the nails so it all comes out in one piece. And you might want to wear gloves because this stuff can bite you if you're not careful. Oh, and the piece of pad we told you to save, you can put all your tack strip in there and roll it up for easy and safe transport. Now that we got the carpet pad and tack strip tore out, it's time to go around and scrape all the drywall drops and all the staples and little fuzzies that are still sticking up. You might want to take a hammer and pound down any nail heads that are sticking up. And also, if you have squeaky floors, now's the time to put screws in the floor while you haven't put floor down yet. All right, guys, we're here in the bedroom and it looks like this is going to be one of the tap down kind. You see what I'm saying? So as you can see, that's what it looks like on the front, the back. It's really just the tap down method. And then on the other side, this is what it looks like. It just has the basic, you know, way. That definitely would be what I would call the tongue. And this would what I'd be called the groove. All right, so we're gonna get started and figure out how we're gonna run this thing, what direction we're gonna run this, and definitely we're gonna use some spacers to get this thing so it stays off the wall, the right distance off that we need. Let's go, let's set this thing up. All right, let's check and see if these door jams are high enough. Kelly? I think we're good. All right. What about the other side over here? Good. good. And, and the closet? Looks like we're good there. All right. We definitely got lucky on our door jams. They were high enough to run our floors underneath. But if your floors won't fit under your door jams, they will need to be cut. You can use a board laid flat and an oscillating tool. And if you don't have one, a regular handsaw might require a little more muscle but it will get the job done and be just as accurate. Guys, there's some, still some tack strip in the, bed, in the closet in there, so I am going to opt to start over right there. That way we can at least get started off that straight wall right there. All right, I'm gonna set the camera up, and we're gonna start installing. And if we run into any issues, uh, we'll address those as we come to them. All right, here we go. Pinnacle waterproof flooring is very DIY friendly. It is super easy to install and doesn't require a lot of tools to get the main body of the floor installed. To get this project done from start to finish, there are a few more tools that you will need, but to get started, you will need to locate a razor knife and a rubber mallet. Now there are other tools I use as well to get through the job much easier. One is an oscillating tool for intricate cuts and a tapping block, though a scrap piece of flooring works just as good. Also, you might want to have a pair of pliers, dikes, or clines for breaking off small pieces. And don't forget your spacers. To make it look symmetrical, I took a measurement of the room. Then I figured out how many planks it was going to take to go all the way across. Whatever space I had left, I divided that by two and that was my starter piece. It ended up being about five and a half inches. Now that I'm down here cutting, this might be a good time to let you guys know. Did you know there was a difference between WPC and SPC? That's right. WPC is a LVP that is made up of a wood inner core, whereas SPC is made up of a stone inner core. So what does that mean? When you're cutting, 
you're gonna go through a whole lot more razor blades with the stone center as you would with the wood center. The wood core is a whole lot easier to cut and break off. I almost didn't have to use any pliers, even on these small rips. On another note, the wood core keeps the temperature of the house a little bit more than the stone does. It acts a little bit more like tile. Could be cold in the mornings. But both products are very durable and should last a long time. Now even though this is a tap down method, when I start the first row, I like to slide the planks together. You'll find that this really does lock them in really nice and tight. And during installation, if you have a plank that just won't tap down, try sliding it in instead of pounding it down. Like I said, this stuff is so easy to cut. Even around door jams, I used to use a razor knife and broke them off with my hands. I can't express how important it is to use spacers. I get comments all the time how hard it is to start the first two rows. I myself even have problems starting the first two rows because the back planks always want to come loose. Using spacers will help you to get through the first two rows without your planks separating. I'd highly recommend them. And I would get the ones from Home Depot where they fit up on top as opposed to the wedge ones that keep sliding under your baseboard every time you pound the next plank in. Now I use a tapping block and I cut it on my table saw special for LVP, but be careful it is a tapping block and not a beater block. You can destroy the face of your planks if you hit it too hard. If you're having a hard time damaging your planks with a tapping block or you don't have one, you can cut a scrap piece of flooring and slip it into the grooves, then you can smack the scrap piece of flooring to close the joints up tight. Here's a tip guys, when you get to the end of a row, turn your planks around backwards, then you can mark it right to the edge of the face, cut it, and use that as your finished piece, but the piece that is left over can be used as a starter. Okay guys, there's a couple ways to cut these air conditioning vents, but I'm going to show you the easiest way. Just lay your plank in backwards and cut it like we told you to so you can get the proper length. And then you can either place the plank in place or use a tape measure to get all of your measurements. I try to pull all my measurements from one side instead of from one side to the edge and from one edge to the other side. That way I know it's accurate to the space. Well guys, we finally made it to the last row. Now this next tip will help to make sure that each plank in the last row is the perfect width. Go ahead and pre-cut all of the planks that will be in the last row, including the finishing piece at the end. Lay these boards directly on top of the previous row so it's flush on all sides. Then take a scrap piece of flooring about four to eight inches long and place it on one side against the baseboard. 
Rest your pencil on the back side of the scrap piece and scribe a line all the way down the floor. So I get people asking me if I use these. These are quarter round cutters. Generally the only time I ever use these is when I'm doing inside of a closet because I can do inside corners. I don't like these for outside corners because they make a mess and they mush your quarter round up. So I'll show you, if you're gonna do it inside corner, this is how I do it. Right here, six and six. I'm going to cut my return first. Six and thirteen sixteenths. Same concept, guys. That's flush. I click it just a little bit in the corner there, just like I do on the on chop saw. Forty four degrees. It'll take some practice. So you guys can hang out or do something drinking. So I get this question a lot. What size brad nails do you use? Well, we use an 18 gauge brad nailer with two inch nails. Do not try to nail down into the flooring unless you've left an adequate amount of expansion gap for your nail to fit down into. We like to lay the quarter round down and lay the gun on its side and fire right through the quarter round into the baseboard to make sure it is secure. Ah, transition time. So, you can just about bet that nine times out of 10, if you're doing a floor higher than a quarter of an inch, the U-channel is not going to be able to reach the bottom of your T-mold. So, in order to make it fit, you're gonna have to cut a piece of scrap flooring and a couple shims to build it up. That way, the bottom of the T will be able to grab the track when you go to clip it in. In this case, one floor was higher than the other floor. So, I wanted to make sure that I built up the back before I put my strip in so that it was on a kind of a slope, sort of like an angle. That way, when I put my T-mold in there, it fits perfect. The company that made these transitions sent little shims in the package. They're made out of a thick cardboard. So I just ripped one in half all the way down and stuck it in first towards the back. Then I stuck my piece of flooring on top of that. This is going to require one more shim. So I wanted to put that one on the top because I felt it would be too flimsy if I put the two thin ones on the bottom. I just lay the floor strip down and use a couple brad nails to hold it into place. Remember. We're going to be putting another shim on here and a U-channel, and we're going to be putting that down with screws. Next, get your measurement for your U-channel. I like to cut mine short a quarter of an inch on both sides. And now it's time for the screws. I put a screw about every other hole. It's not necessary to fill every hole. This next tip can be detrimental to your installation. Wherever you put the screws in, it may pinch the U-channel in a little bit. Take your hammer and pound it out just a little bit so it doesn't fold over when you're trying to install this transition. Start your transition on one side and slide it in about a half inch away. Once you get one side locked in, pound the rest of it away with the mallet. Well, there you have it. Installing pinnacle waterproof vinyl planks. That was pretty easy. Hope I brought you guys some value and I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, go ahead and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It definitely helps out the channel. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications, that little bell. That way YouTube will notify you when I put more videos out. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Peace.